President of the Republic of Finland, Mr. Niinistö, Your Excellencies, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen online around the world. Welcome to the 2020 Millennium Technology Prize Award Ceremony. The Millennium Technology Award will be uh, given tonight for the ninth time by Technology Academy Finland. This international prize is Finland's tribute to groundbreaking innovations that promote sustainable development. Originally, this award ceremony was scheduled for May 2020, but due to the reason we are all too familiar with, we needed to postpone with one year. None of us could have imagined that after a year, we still have the pandemic with us, which is why the ceremony is now organized as a live streamed event. The semi-virtual format, however, has enabled us to enlarge the audience, and we are so pleased to have you all with us tonight. My name is Nelly Sager. I'm a graduate from Aalto University School of Science and have background in technology entrepreneurship. Currently, I work in making healthcare smarter and more accessible through digitalization and technology. So you can imagine how excited and honored I am to be here tonight and to serve as your master of ceremony. Tonight, we will find out who will be the next winner of the Millennium Technology Prize and what the winning innovation is all about. Now, to open this very special evening, it is my honor to welcome on stage Professor Maria Makarov, Chair of Technology Academy, Finland. Mr. President, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. In the turn of the millennium, our then Prime Minister, Mr. Paavo Lipponen, invited the Finnish Research Council, the Academy of Finland, to set up a high-profile working group to develop a global prize to be awarded for groundbreaking research-based innovations. The visionary experts representing diverse sectors of society created a concept and laid down criteria as follows. The winning innovation should enhance people's quality of life, promote sustainable development, generate applications with global commercial success, create new socioeconomic value, and stimulate further cutting-edge research and development. These criteria, more than 20 years ago, they are perfectly valid today. The patron of the prize is the President of the Republic of Finland. The 1 million euro award is financed from the state budget and the governing body of the prize is Technology Academy Finland. Nominations are invited every second year from all over the world, universities, research organizations, companies, industries, academies of science. Let me give you now a flash of the previous winners. Tim Berners-Lee was awarded the prize in 2004 for the World Wide Web, which changed the world. Thereafter, Suji Nakamura for light emitting diode materials that revolutionized lighting and digital reading. Robert Langer got it then for technologies enabling precise remote controlled release of drugs in the human body, notably in the brain. Michael Gretzel got it for development of third generation solar cells. Then Shinya Yamanaka got it for adult stem cell technology, enabling creation of laboratory grown spare parts for humans to replace diseased tissues and organs. Linus Turvalds got the prize for the open source operating system used now all over the world, and he shared the prize with Dr. Yamanaka. Thereafter, Stuart Parking was awarded the prize for developing increased data storage capacity, then Francis Arnold for technology 
enabling the produ production of proteins with desired properties such as enzymes to replace harmful chemicals in uh, industrial processes. And in 2018, Tuomo Suntola got the prize for coating technology that helped revolutionize smart ICT devices. Doctors Nakamura, Yamanaka and Arnold have later gotten the Nobel Prize and this highlights original research findings as source of groundbreaking innovations. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored to announce the winner of the 2020 Millennium Technology Prize. The winning innovation is next generation DNA sequencing. And the innovators are Professor Shankar Balasubramanian and Professor David Klinerman from the University of Cambridge, UK. My heartfelt congratulations to you, Professor Balasubramanian and Professor Klinerman. Thank you, Maria Makarov, for the most inspiring start of this ceremony. Next up, the chair of the International Selection Committee, Professor Päivi Törmä, will introduce the justification and motivation for selecting the 2020 Millennium Technology Prize winning innovation. Welcome, Professor Päivi Törmä. President of the Republic, honorable prize winners, ladies and gentlemen. I ask you to rewind uh, to mid-February 2020, when uh, the COVID pandemic had not yet uh, broken out. That was the time when we uh, selected today's winners. As my task is to tell the reason for the choice, I was thinking very hard that time, the following question. How can I explain to the general public that it is important to be able to read the DNA of a virus? Now that has become a no-brainer. The Solexa Illumina Next Generation DNA Sequencing, NGS, has played a crucial role in understanding the COVID-19 uh, uh, virus, its variants, and in developing the vaccines in fastest ever speed. Certainly, the International Selection Committee could not foresee that. Possible help with pandemics was only one reason for the choice. The main justification comes the fundamental importance of this innovation to anything biological. The coronavirus pandemic has reminded us how dependent we are on biology. We humans tend to think that we are protected by our houses of concrete, cars of steel, money of bits. But when it comes to matters of life and death, we are vulnerable biological entities made of carbon and water. And the same is true for our planet. Whether it's habitable hinges on biological realities in the end. And here, NGS comes as a superb tool. Think about personalized medicine, for instance. Why do some people recover from cancer when given some medication, while others don't? Well, that's because we are individuals. And so far, medicine has been one size fits all. Now, with the enormously fast uh, sequencing offered by NGS, medication can be tailored to benefit each individual. NGS also helps fighting climate change, biodiversity loss and poverty. It can be used for producing plants that give more nutrition, for monitoring pollution, soil condition, biodiversity loss and crop diseases. Basically, NGS has lifted the level of uh, biomedical and biology research enormously and this will help to give a healthy and sustainable life for all. 
NGS could be compared to some uh, major steps in communications, but it's not yet the Gutenberg's uh, printing press. In 1950s, Rosalind Franklin, James Watson and Francis Crick made their breakthrough ob observations of the DNA structure. That was like getting the idea of carving words on stone tablets. And the Human Genome Project uh, that uh, sequenced the whole human DNA, DNA and took 13 years was like producing a huge library of stone tablets. Compared to that, NGS is the papyrus paper, something a million times faster, cheaper, easier to use. The breakthrough that enables widespread use. And as with the papyrus paper, there is more to come. We are only in the beginning of an exciting journey to understand life. Finally, I'd like to mention that professors Balasubramanian and Klenerman told that the grant proposal that funded their breakthrough research did not even contain the word sequencing. They only come up with the application idea accidentally during a scientific adventure. Today, 20 years later, the fruit of their blue sky fundamental research is saving millions of lives. On behalf of the International Selection Committee, I congratulate professors Pala Subramanian and Klenerman. And now we will see a video describing this uh, innovation. So, so the main idea was to develop a method so we could sequence the genome of an individual at low cost and high speed. In order to do that, we had to redesign the way that DNA sequencing has been done. So um, just like if you wanted a bicycle that went a million times faster, it might have wheels, but it wouldn't look like a bicycle. So we did the same thing. We totally redesigned the process. Scientists estimate that us humans have around 20,000 to 25,000 genes inside our cells. These genes control or influence, more or less, all aspects of our life and health. But while it's relatively easy to draw links between certain damaged genes and the diseases these genes cause, in most cases, things aren't that straightforward. DNA sequencing is the process of determining the nucleic acid sequence, the order of nucleotides in DNA. It includes any method or technology that is used to determine the order of the four bases – adenine, guanine, cytosine and thymine. Comparing healthy and mutated DNA sequences can diagnose different diseases, such as various cancers, and can be used to guide patient treatment. The Next Generation Sequencing NGS, involves fragmenting sample DNA into many small pieces that are immobilized on the surface of a chip and locally amplified. By detecting the color-coded nucleotides incorporated at each position on the chip with a fluorescence detector and repeating this cycle hundreds of times, it is possible to determine the DNA sequencing of each fragment. Having a quick way to sequence DNA allows for faster and more individualized medical care to be administered or even take action beforehand. So the hope would be that if you've been sequenced, we'll, we'll eventually know which diseases that predisposes you to get and before you get the disease, you, you can be um, treated, your lifestyle can be modified. The main difference between the old method of DNA sequencing and the NGS method is the sheer scale and speed. The NGS method can currently sequence a human genome for under $1,000 in about a day, which is a remarkable million-fold improvement in speed and cost in just over a decade, and a 100 or 1,000-fold of the initial goal. A completely different approach to the possibilities of DNA sequencing is possible now, thanks to the innovation, and it has enabled the development of a broad range of related technologies, applications and innovations. Due to its efficiency, NGS is now being widely adopted in healthcare and diagnostics, such as studying coronavirus, but it's providing new opportunities also in biology, and there's even research about using DNA to store data. I would say, given the complexity of what needed to be achieved, we went from the ideas phase to having a working system 
that could be manufactured and put in the hands of other researchers. Uh, that entire process was, was less than 10 years. I think that's not a very long time scale in terms of science. Working with new innovations and new technology is hardly ever a quick, steady process, or even a slow and steady process. When it comes to science, some luck and fortunate accidents might be needed to find the right path. It could be even said that the whole process requires finding the right new challenges that need to be failed and only then eventually solved. There were many, many failures along the way, of course. There, there always is in, in, in science and uh, if you're treading new ground and I have a saying to, to my research group uh, from time to time that the secret of success is, is to fail quickly. And uh, failure is actually when you start to learn um, about uh, what, what the right pathway might be. Over the last decades, innovation has become a significant way to combat critical social risks and threats. New technologies open us doors to new possibilities and opportunities. By engaging more openly with each other, scientists and researchers stand not only a better understanding of their own work, but also develop new insights. I think the last year has shown us that um, scientists working together can solve major world problems in a very short space of time. So I think if we can continue to do that, I think we can start to tackle some of these very major problems such as climate change, as well as disease and health. And I, th I think and hopefully we won't lose that once we, we finally emerge from the pandemic, that we'll continue to work in this highly collaborative way to solve the major problems for mankind. Dear winners, welcome on stage. Good evening, President Minister. The floor is yours. Good evening. Esteemed uh, professors Shankar Balasubramanian and David Kleinemann, ladies and gentlemen, in a little than a year, one particular challenge, the COVID-19 pandemic, has changed our lives completely. Fortunately, we also have seen rapid scientific progress in combating it. Despite the current focus on the coronavirus, pandemics are, of course, not the only global challenge we are facing. Together, we have to find ways to fight climate change, to ensure adequate food supplies, to safeguard a clean environment, just to name a few examples. All these challenges have one thing in common, Answers to them require solutions only technology and science can provide. We need technology and science for a better life. And for a better life, we need scientists with courage, curiosity and skills. We need uh, breakthrough innovations from borderless cooperation for the benefit of humanity. Indeed, beneath every new innovation lies commitment, persistence, and a great amount of pioneering research. The Millennium Technology Prize is Finland's tribute to innovations for a better life. Today, I have the great pleasure to congratulate you, Professor Shankar Pala Subramanian and Professor David Kleinman, as the ninth winners of the Millennium Technology Prize. We are grateful for your achievements in developing the next generation DNA sequencing technology. 
this technology is said to have changed the basic understanding of life as shots by enabling accurate, fast and low-cost DNA sequencing. The innovation has a, a tremendous impact on biology and medicine worldwide. It, in, it enables improved healthcare, enhanced food production, and better understanding of crop diseases. Furthermore, this technology has laid the ground for the creation of multiple vaccines against the coronavirus. I am impressed by your innovation and your work. I will now ask the Chair of Technology Academy Finland, Maria Makarov, to present uh, to you the Millennium Technology Prize Award. This award, an artwork Milky Way, has been created by Pekka Jylhä, the renowned Finnish artist. It uh, symbolizes open-minded, creative and curious thinking, characteristic of successful research. At its best, this kind of thinking leads to significant breakthroughs for humanity, such as the new generation DNA sequencing. My warmest con congratulations. Thank you, President Niinistö. Thank you, President Niinistö. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to hand out the award trophies. Thank you, Nelly. Professor Balas Obremania. Thank you. Thank you, Nelly. Professor Klenemann. Thank you. And now, it is time for your speeches, please. I thank the President of the Republic of Finland and Technology Academy Finland. It's a very deep honor to be receiving this award and I'm humbled by it. I'm also uh, delighted to be sharing the prize with David. The work that led to this technology started with basic research funded by taxpayers' money in the UK and led to us forming a company called Selexa where the technology was developed into the first commercial um, NGS sequencing system which was released in 2006. Then in 2007, um, Illumina acquired the technology and company and continued advancing and improving the technology further, bringing it to what it is today. All of that has served to democratize the technology and make it available widely around the world for researchers. Um, so I would like to thank uh, those in Cambridge University, our co-workers who helped us achieve the early work the people of Selexa for the part they played in this, and also um, the people of Illumina for what they have done and what they are continuing to do. Now, technology um, doesn't have impact in itself. Um, this has required the efforts of many communities of scientists who've used the technology, um, physicians, clinicians, and also patients to bring genomic medicine to where it is today and taking it to where it may be tomorrow. So this wider community needs to also be acknowledged. Thank you very much. I'd like to just echo what Shankar said. I feel both humbled and, and delighted to receive this award with Shankar. 
And I'd like to acknowledge the talented people in our labs in, in the University of Cambridge and at Selex and Illumina who made the technology what it is today. I hope they feel as proud as I do that this technology has been recognised by the award of this prestigious prize. In, at a personal level, I'm delighted to win the award with Shankar. Since we started our labs in the University of Cambridge together, we were made Fellows of the Royal Society together, and we've now won this prize together. Thank you very much. Warmest congratulations, Professors Balasubramanian and Kleneman. And thank you for the astonishing work you're doing and for the impact you are creating. At this point, I would like to thank President Niinistö, the winners of the 2020 Millennium Technology Prize, Professors Balasubramanian and Kleinerman. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, for this breathtaking ceremony. Tomorrow, the winners of the Millennium Technology Prize, Professor Shankar Balasubramanian and Professor David Kleneman will be giving a public Millennium Technology Prize lecture as a part of the virtual Millennium Innovation Forum at 4.30 p.m. Eastern European Standard Time. And everybody is welcome to join. You can find the link to join the forum on the website millenniuminnovationforum.fi. This award ceremony will be closed by a performance produced by the group Total Cello Fresh from the University of the Arts, Helsinki. And we are up for a real treat. Total Cello Fresh consists of the most outstanding young students of the Sibelius Academy of the University of the Arts and is led by the Academy cello lecturer Hannu Kiiski. The cellists we hear today are, are Sirja Nironen, Iris Piri, Maria Morfin Venäläinen, Oliver Erlich, Arturi Aalto and Hannu Kiiski. On my behalf, thank you for this wonderful evening and ceremony. Welcome on stage, Total Cello Fresh. <laughs>